all of a sudden you'd be like driving around and you're like, is that a spot? Is that a spot? Can I cast there? I mean, one time I was just filling up gas and my sales guy was like, yo, this canal, I'm pretty sure has snakehead in it. And I happened to have all my rods in there, pulled one out, cast it out, and got myself a Lachon. Hey. <laughs> yes! Fishing in Taiwan. Something that has been done by many big TV shows like River Monsters, Monster Fish, Kingfishers, all that kind of stuff. And we are a popular fishing destination, but yet we don't have all the resources for people to fish here. The language barrier is one of the most difficult things to cross in Thailand. You know, we don't really speak English here, we're not we would colonize, so we don't have that in our curriculum. But, you know, some of the people know that a little more English than the others, but still like the more technical stuff like how to catch striped snakehead in Thailand is a little hard to find information for. So with that being said, here I am, Oz Banker Hooker, here to give you guys all the information and resources you need to have an enjoyable fishing experience here in Thailand. Now, first up, quick disclaimer, we're not here to make enemies with the fishing parks or the fishing guides. This is for all that fishing in between. You know, fishing parks are great. I love going to them. They have good food, they have nice toilets. Actually, most of them have rather mediocre toilets, but there are some that have very nice toilets. But nevertheless, it's better than pooping in the bushes. And usually an abundance of really cool exotic fish to go after. Then, with fishing guides, they're great too. I mean, you pay one guy one price and he handles all the accommodation, travel, and gear for you. I mean, if you want that kind of experience, that is for you. But for everyone else who just wants to do it, on their own, in their own time, and maybe just like, you know, want to throw a couple of lines at the end of the day, this is the video for you. So today I'm going to launch a series of these videos where I'm going to teach you guys how to catch fish here in Thailand. And our first fish is perfect for the lockdown conditions our country has just entered. You see, Thailand at the time of this video is now undergoing another viral outbreak, but, uh, you know, so a lot of traveling between provinces can be limited. As for me, People in Bangkok, we're now, we're actually past the red zone. We're now the mahogany zone, meaning we can't even leave our province to another province without quarantine. But just because you can't leave your province doesn't mean you can't go fishing, especially for the species we're going after today. Bla Chon, or the striped snakehead known as the Chana striata. This is a wonderful snakehead because it is basically Thailand's large mouth bass. What I mean by that, I mean, when you think about the largemouth bass, this is like the, Amer in America, the largemouth bass is like the fish you can find in anywhere in the country with all sorts of ways to catch them. Striped snakehead is kind of like a close equivalent in terms of its availability. It is a fish that is capable of living in almost any shallow body of water across the country. You can find them in the north, the south, the center, and the Isan regions. Everywhere there's striped snakehead to go after. So. This is the perfect fish for anyone who just doesn't want to travel far and want to have a nice time catching some small snakeheads, small but aggressive snakeheads, not too far from home. So let's start. The Pla Chon, or the striped snakehead, known in the Latin language as the Chana striata. This is one of the snakehead species. It is the most abundant and, in my opinion, the toughest of all the snakeheads. It has the ability to breathe air like all the snakeheads, but because it's a lot smaller and tougher than the giant snakehead, it could stay out of water for a maximum of, I think, four days and capable of traversing from one pond to another. The problem with the giant snakeheads is they're a lot bigger and sure they can breathe on land for a bit, but because of their weight, they're not as able to slither around and get to the next body of water. Same goes to the striped snakehead. Once it gets to like a certain size, it's not able to do the crawling as much as it can. Now, another really cool thing they do is in the dry season when the water goes down too low and they can't migrate to another body of water in time what they do is they dig themselves down into the mud and burrow themselves and wait for the rains to come this actually is a behavior that's seen in a lot of fish here in southeast asia including many types of catfish you actually can see a lot of those viral videos where people pour like coke into a hole and all these fish come out so that is one of the behavior of the snakeheads here the biggest striped snakehead that I've seen was four kilos. But in Thailand, that is 
that number is like quite unheard of. Most of the time, you'll find it in like you know an isolated pond where no one's like fished it for like five years or something. But if you're going out and about fishing the canals or more of the public areas, then the striped snakeheads that you'll find would be anywhere between a hundred grams to a kilogram. If you catch a two kilo striped snakehead out in the public areas, that's your trophy fish. So. Pat yourself on the back if you catch one of those one day. Why are they fun to catch? Well, I mean, this is a, it's a snakehead. You know, all snakeheads are fun to catch. They are aggressive, angry predator fish that just charge at the lures and make sure that it kills the thing that it's gonna go after, right? It's like a very violent, angry genus of fish and the striped snakehead is one of them. And a the beautiful thing is because if they, you know, because snakeheads are such predators, they're at such a high position of the food chain that just about any lure works on them so long as it could fit its mouth. So top water lures work fine. Hollow bodies are wonderful. Uh, you know, soft plastics at the bottom, fishing with Texas rig also work really well. I mean, there's just so many ways to catch the striped snakehead. Like I said, it's like the largemouth bass. It's all, it's all around the country and there's so many ways to catch them. So how do you find them? Well, like I said, they are capable of living out of water for few days so long as it's damp enough meaning they spread really far but there are still a criteria that has to fit for them to be able to live there so first it needs to be shallow enough there's been a couple of cases where you know when you know we have this buddhist practice of releasing fish for good karma but a lot of people have been releasing striped snakeheads into areas where they will die so ideally striped snakeheads need to have a shallow bank for them to rest at if they don't have that they drown so <laughs> that's one thing to look for you want something not too deep so anywhere from like 15 centimeters of depth all the way to maybe 30 to 60 centimeters that is like ideal for them to rest in your second condition is it needs to have enough structure to hide in so first it has to be shallow enough and second it needs to have enough structure to hide in so if it's an open water just like a little concrete barrier and there's like no vegetation not even like a couple of concrete like bars sticking out for them to hide under you're not going to find a snakehead there they're ambush predators so you want to find a place where they can ambush from now another condition the third condition is it needs to be re relatively clean enough yes i've caught snakeheads in some really polluted uh, canals in bangkok you know around come hang i one time went down is like pretty smelly canal and still caught myself a 100 gram snakehead with a caesar 7. it's it's doable you know they they can breathe air so they don't really have to filter that oxygen with the gills in the water they filter it through that bubble in their mouth fourth and the most important factor in finding the striped snakehead is it needs to be in an area with still water you know flowing streams they can't really stay in but if there's like a flowing stream with like a little pocket where the water is shallow enough calm enough and has enough structure you could still find your snakehead so I've, I've seen snakeheads in all sorts of areas all around the country you could find them in flooded rice fields you find them in urban canals as well as rural canals you could find them in like the bends of the river where it's shallow enough and has enough vegetation and still water for them to go into <laughs> they're everywhere now you're aware of where they can be hiding and now you get excited every time you see all the little bodies of water all the still waters and the vegetation you see movement on the water and that gets your heart excited now it's time to gear up and get yourself the right equipment to get your snake hit so with striped snake hit they're nowhere near as big as the giant snake hit but they still fight dirty you know like all snake heads they immediately shoot for cover or shoot for going down to try to wrap your line up on something so the first thing you have to do is have you got to make sure you have the gear that could pull it out of that. So even if it's like a small snakehead, you must be able to muscle it out right away. So ideally, I wouldn't go with a 10, 20 weight rod. I find that's a little too heavy for me, unless you can buy like the really expensive stuff and then like you can get the 10, 20 grade. But ideally, I wouldn't go higher than a 7, 14 weight in terms of a fishing rod. Then as for the reel, uh, well, sometimes you'd be working with hollow body lures as well as top water lures. So you want something that could crank enough line. So none of that five ratio, you want at least like 6.2 to seven ratio reels. Some people even use eight or nine ratio. I find that's a little excessive since, especially with the hollow body lures, you don't need to crank it too fast. You need to crank it just enough to get that snake head excited about it, right? So not too fast of a reel, but anywhere between 6.2 to seven ratio is ideal.
Next, you got your leader line and your braided line. I usually go for a braid of PE1, no, no less than that. If I go less than that, like PE0.6, it's, it's not that great for abrasion resistance. You know, you are going to be dealing with cover once in a while, so you don't want to lose your lure all the time. So a PE1 or 1.5 is perfect for striped snakehead with a leader line of maybe 20 pounds or 30 pounds. When you're fishing for striped snakehead, especially around areas with lots of branches, I advocate using a leader line over the back of hooker twist simply because you want that 30 pound leader or maybe even 40 pound leader to have that thickness so that when it's wrapped around a branch it's easier to pull out the problem with braid is that if you cast it over some branches it immediately just wraps around and that's that's a goodbye to your lure right whereas if you had a 30 to 40 pound leader line it's not going to wrap around a branch as easily so you can pull it off much easier so do keep that in mind when you're rigging up the kind of lures that we're using for the striped snakehead initially our company the rock block company created like a five centimeter hollow body rat lure just so that we could target the striped snakeheads but uh, all our fans were telling us we need to downsize it because you're, you know you want to be able to fish even the smallest body of water right like so the five centimeter ones you can fish like anywhere from like a two to three hundred gram snakehead and up but anyone that wants to go for the 100 to 300 gram size snakeheads you're going to go for the 3.5 centimeter lures so that's why we came out with the blade rat 3.5 allowing us to target the even smaller ones and also even the bigger ones because sometimes they're spooked out you know like there's so much activity going on there's so many people catching snakeheads in thailand that sometimes downsizing your lure from like a five centimeter to a 3.5 centimeter makes all the difference in the world. And then on top of that, you can also use kicker frogs like our Caesar Pops and the Caesar 7s. And these are the smaller soft plastic lures and they're great as well. And the difference between like using the hollow body and like the soft plastics I find is like with the hollow body, you really gotta be sure you get that hook set just right. Simply because, you know, you got these two hooks and then you got the material of the lure sitting like that. So you want it to get really deep into the mouth before you set that hook. Whereas with the soft plastics like the Caesar and the Caesar Pop, and notice that they chew it a lot longer, so it, it gives you a lot more time to work with that lure. And especially because you know when the snakehead bites, you don't know where it's biting from. It could bite from the front, it could bite from the side, the back, or underneath. But the problem is the the tips of your hook might not actually touch the fish's mouth. So when you set that hook, it just flies out of its mouth. So ideally, when it does bite on, like, say, a hollow body or even a single hook, you just want to give it a little more time to take it in. But with soft plastic, I find, it does take it in a lot deeper, so you can make sure you get a much better hook set. But that's your top water game. Your top water game is going to be somewhere in the early mornings and the late afternoons, right? So, you know, at, at dawn and dusk is the time where you use the top waters because that's when they would come out, hunt the surface a lot more. Then as the sun starts going up, you want to skip... Uh, switch over to some lures where you can skip and you know like a lure where you can like skip under the branches into the shadows would be good if you still want to work that top water or the more common way to catch them when the sun goes up is to switch over to a Texas rig you know so a sub plastic with a sinker on an offset hook a rig so that it's weedless allows it to be moved uh, allows it to be cranked through the weeds as well as all the structure where they will be hiding. Here's the thing with using soft plastics. If you're using soft plastics for the striped snakehead and you're working like the bottom, one thing to look out for is when they bite, right? So the top water bite is very obvious. You see a big splash, your lure disappears, you count one, two, crank your line tight, and then set your hook. But when you're fishing for snakeheads using like the Texas rig technique, what you're looking for or is that sensation of a bump on your rod. So imagine you're cranking back and let's take your finger and you smack that graphite rod once. Just do that, that, right? That vibration is roughly the feeling of what a bite of a snakehead feels like. When you feel that, pause yourself, feel your lines. If it's going out, let it go out a bit, right? Open your bail arm, let it out, or free spool, let it out a bit. But if it's not moving, if it's just staying there, just try it, crank your line, feel the weight of the fish. Sometimes you just take the lure and holding on, you're just waiting right there. So you just crank your line tight, get the hook in position, then you set that hook. But if it's swimming away, you just wait about one or two seconds, then it'll just take that second bite, putting that hook firmly in its mouth, crank that line tight, lining up with the side of its jaw, set that hook. As for eating, um, believe it or not, the striped snakehead is actually a very delicious fish. It's in really clean conditions like the reservoirs. They are amazing in flavor, right? The, but you would, I would highly advise against eating the ones you catch in the city because, well, microplastics, pollution, all the runoff can be dangerous. Not to mention in some of the rural canals, 
there have been some issues with illegal pesticides that have been making their way into the country. So the para caught glyphosate, you know, a roundup, you know, the, the weed killer that's been banned in other countries has made its way to Thailand. And because of that, some of that pollution runoff in the countryside does go into the fish. So you're looking at heavy metals that go into the frogs and fish too. So be, be warned, be warned. I, I would be careful eating fish that is a, from the city or from a canal by a farm that is heavy, that has high pesticide use. But otherwise, uh, if it's from somewhere like the reservoirs, by all means, that's fair game, totally delicious, go for it. But yes, so I guess that's all I have to say about the striped snakehead for today. Um, I hope you guys have a good time going out finding your first striped snakehead in Thailand or wherever it is, because they do appear all over Southeast Asia as well as in Taiwan. So I hope that this information can be useful to you wherever you are. And if you guys do catch something, using the techniques in this video, please do send a, some photos to our Facebook group. We'll leave a link in the description below. As for today, I think that's all we have to cover for the striped snakehead and how to catch it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please like, share, sub, all that good stuff. So yeah, if you guys have any more questions about fishing, fishing in Thailand or snakehead fishing or whatever, right? Please do leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it in the next video. As for today, I'm Oz Bankahooker. Thank you so much for watching. Go out and fish. And have a great time. So what, D-Crab?